Are you muted? I guess you can't be. <laughs> you guys let me know when you can hear me. And away we go. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Belgium. Good afternoon. Hey. We have a, we have Canada in the house, Australia, Belgium. I love it. Oh, I see it. a few u usuals, regulars, <laughs> KC. There's Vadim. Love it. Just Chris. Turning, my, turning my phone on. Do not disturb. Sitting through my ads like a good person. <laughs> Lisa's <laughs> in the house. Hello. Oh, yep. Yep. Everyone talks amongst yourselves. Premium <laughs> members don't don't have ads, and uh, non-premium members will be with you in a moment. We're, you're you're on screen now. Oh, I'm sure I am. Oh, okay. Oh, like you oh, know, the ads are over. Yeah. All right. Oh my goodness. Captain Lewis. What are you a captain of? <laughs> Has it already been a month? I can't believe it. Oh man. Oh my gosh, there's a, already a question about a party box. A party box? <laughs> yeah, remember you were talking, a party speaker? You know how you were talking about that the other day? You and I were? Yes. Oh. Yeah, someone asked, Edgar uh -huh. asked, how it's about reviewing JBL's party boxes? Ah, how about reviewing JBL's party boxes? Well, which JB okay, which JBL do we have? We we just not just we've had it for wow we've had I it shouldn't forever. Admit to how long the, we've had it? No, the heritage the heritage. Uh, um, it could it, it looks Bluetooth. A, it, it looks, looks like, like a Klipsch the three. Well, it's size like, wise, it's bigger than the three. It's bigger than the three, but it has the grill of the L one hundred classic. But in black, ours yeah. is black. Um, we've had that. It's a it's a nice little thud muffin, is what it is. Um, <laughs> it puts out bass, man. So I guess if that's where the party's at, um, I don't know if we're gonna. I don't know if I'm gonna actually review it, um, just because for me it's somewhat of a niche thing. Like it's it doesn't quite fit into my lifestyle. But I guess if I was more of a kind of grab it and go or maybe when our backyard or our side yard or our yard project is done like maybe that's when that's a good use for it like put it by the you know the pool or something I don't I don't know like right now I don't have a specific need for it and so it actually isn't getting used much the other um, thing though people watching <laughs> the the tricky part is mm. trying to guess Mm. what you all are actually going to watch. That's true too. That's true too. Because it's very difficult when... It, it is difficult. When we, when we put out a video that no one watches, mm -hmm. it really messes with our... Um, well, it just messes with, you You know, YouTube sees that and they're like, oh, no one cares about you anymore. And so they decide they're not going to show you know our you guys our videos mm. and that becomes tricky so it, it's a, it's a bit of a coin toss well and it's also interesting as we've learned doing this now for a number of years um someone asked is it just me or is the mic level kind of low uh i just raised it a little bit uh hassan his sam did that <laughs> did that help it help you um, Andrew will never not butcher someone's I, I, name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm doing the best that I can. I'm from Nebraska. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> the the most obscure name you would get is like Toby. Um, Do you know that's what my parents were going to name me if I was a boy? Really? Yes. Oh, so I think I was, if I had been a girl, uh -huh. I think I would have been Julie. Oh. I think that's how the story goes. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> It's not important. <laughs> um, what we were saying, uh, what were we talking? Oh, right. Having done this for a couple of years now, there's like three tiers. I don't, I don't want to call them tiers, but there's like three 
buckets that videos can kind of fall into. There is the bucket that appeals to the dyed in the wool true viewers, you know, the fans watching this, like you're going to tune in kind of no matter what. And you tune in because you just like hearing what Christy and I have to say about darn near anything. And we love you for that. Yes, we do. We, you right there. Um, then there's the crew that's like the group that's like, okay, we do like your channel. And we do <laughs> think we do think that you're good most of the time. But if you don't stay in like a certain lane of high fire home theater, we may skip a video or two. That's also that's great. That's still good. You know, no problem. It's not as good. And then there is <laughs> the third bucket, which is people that have never seen this channel before and who may only come and watch one or two videos because they are like right there on the market for say a Samsung soundbar. And they only watch YouTube videos uh, when they need something. And the one thing is, the interesting thing is, is that if you quote, wanna grow your channel or you wanna grow as a channel, like you hit that third group as hard as you can because you'll probably get the sort of like, I guess I'll subscribe click, you know what I mean? Or the watch, because you're talking about things like say a Bluetooth party speaker or a sound bar or mm -hmm. things that are like more readily available in a Target or a Walmart or a Best Buy or whatever. And that's great. The, the problem is, is like, like I said, that person's not so much a return viewer and they don't watch as long. They're not as engaged. They don't leave comments. We don't get to know them. And so, but as a, as a creator, you have to juggle all three groups um, and you have to make something for everyone if you want to be ultimately if you want to be successful or have longevity and for me I just find that it, it helps break up my monotony when I kind of create something for for another group because like sound bars like sound bars break up the usual stuff. And I actually, over the years, I've just come to really love them. And if it wasn't for the group. Oh, and like TVs yeah, too. Yeah, if it wasn't for like the group that is like so into sound bars and TVs, um, you know, we probably wouldn't have brought them to the channel except for the fact that now that we have, being able to put sound bars against like, quote, audiophile speakers and seeing how big or little a difference there is has been like eye-opening. And it's, it's one of the things I love about what we do and one of the things that I'm very proud of is that we're not afraid to kind of toe that line or actually step way over the line in terms of like, well, no one would ever compare a sound bar to $1,300 or $1,500 speakers. Yeah, well, it doesn't mean they wouldn't like someone else to, you know, it doesn't mean that people aren't curious. And that's one of the things that I just, I love, I love. Okay. Hey, before we get started, yeah. I don't know if everyone saw the poll that mm. I posted, that was actually me. Like, there's a lot of times <laughs> where you're actually talking to me, yeah. but it has Andrew's face. Oh, you just let the biggest secret out. <laughs> You'd be surprised at how much I respond as, as Andrew. Uh, but, you know, YouTube is silly. They won't, like, they even though I have, like, a little moderator um, sig signifier, sometimes, yeah. like, it doesn't have me associated with the channel. It's yeah, kind of silly. Yeah, I don't know. I don't Any, anyway, uh, I digress. Poll. Uh, I, I posted the poll on the, on the announcement for the live show mm -hmm. about how often do you go see live music? And I need to go refresh it. Oh, crap. Where'd it go? <laughs> <laughs> We're live. Okay, hold on. Two seconds, folks. Two seconds. Okay, so surprisingly... Or not surprisingly. Mm -hmm. Oh, now it's not going to load. <laughs> oh, I swear to goodness. It's and, literally not loading for me. And we're live. All right. I can't, I, I can't, I can't. Well, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to you. Well, okay. We'll come back to you because I am already 900 years behind. Oh, wait, I got it. <laughs> I got it. All right. I got it. So there was a tie. Okay. Thirty-five percent said they never attend live shows, and then thirty-five percent said they'd go about to 
go to a live show about once to twice a year. Okay. And then the next category at 17% was three to five shows a year. And then more than five was the lowest at 13%. Mm. And a lot of people were saying that they don't go as, they don't go anymore either because no one is coming Mm. that they want to see, or they don't like the crowds anymore. And people don't know how to behave at a live show. show. I'll go with the latter. I'll go with the latter. Cause I mean, I'll travel if I, if I really want to see somebody, um, but I totally can relate to the whole people don't know how to watch anything anymore. And I mean anything. It Concerts are particularly, excuse me, um, concerts are particularly awful. But even sporting events can be absolute trash. Um, and depending on who might be over at your house, just trying to enjoy a movie in your living room with friends can sometimes be intolerable. So uh, I get it. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking I, about I live shows. Live shows. But I'm just saying, like, I, I've i seen some great live shows, but I, I've seen some great bands perform live, but I wouldn't say that the show-going experience was good. Like, we, we I, I can recall seeing Middle Kids with you a couple of times, and I love them. We're going to go see them again this year. I love them. They're a great band and they do a great job, but their crowd is awful. Like it's just, it's, it's just a bunch of, you know, eh, what, you know, that kind of thing. I think that was Austin. I I know we don't go as often in our new place because Mm -hmm. frankly, the live, the live live venues here suck are terrible. Yeah. Um, No, we're not going to tell you where we live. That's private. Uh, But they're not that great. The sound is terrible. Terrible. Yeah, we always um, travel to go see someone. So, but we have, I would say we fall in the like two to three a year. Per year? Yeah. yeah. When we lived in Austin, the music venues were better despite the crowds sometimes yeah. being iffy. Um, I know before you and I went, met, I went to see live music all the time and I drug you out to a lot of live shows. You did. And I mean, I saw, I, I did see my fair share of like smaller independent stuff, like when I lived in Nashville, because just everywhere you go in Nashville, you could literally be going to a, you know, a McDonald's drive through, but there'll be a live show in the parking lot. Um, so I did see a lot more live stuff at that point. But anyway, good poll. And we did a poll from last last Sunday or two Sundays ago video about AV receivers overwhelmingly like 70% to nothing uh, overwhelmingly you all picked that it's 2024 and we want our cake and eat it too. Meaning a receiver needs to have all of the power and all of the bells and whistles. So we were right (laughs) in our critique. Uh, Yes, Vadim, we live in Greenland. (laughs) Yes, we do. All right, let's get started. We have our first uh, super chat of the day, and that is from Ray. I own Martin Logan 20s and the 30 as my center. Got the upgrade bug. I'm looking at the Polk R700 Klipsch 8000 Mark II or the Martin Logan 60 XT. What do you recommend? Not sure which would have the best matching center. Well, um, I can tell you this much. If you're Martin Logan 20 and 30s, so I'm assuming that you mean like the XT new line, the, the uh, motion line. Um, that's a phenomenal speaker. And if you're already familiar with Martin Logan as the brand, that might be the most, um, I guess, relatable for you. Like as far as, you know, going from one to the other, it's probably not going to be as big of a jump. Um, but that said, maybe that's not going to scratch that upgrade bug that you have because it won't be different enough potentially. Um, in which case you got Polk R 700 or Klipsch 8,000 Mark two. Well, if you want a livelier, brighter, more dynamic, but potentially more colored, less neutral sound, you want the Klipsch. If you're like, I want to hear what this neutrality everyone keeps talking about and every, stupid measurement computer says every speaker should have, then you want the Polk. Um, It really comes down to that. As far as matching centers, the Polk uh, R center is great. The Klipsch center is great. Um, And then Martin Logan obviously makes two different centers on the new motion line. 
Uh, so I'm not, I guess I'm not telling you exactly what to go buy, but at the same time, I'm trying to kind of give you a taste of what you can expect. Uh, if it were me, I would say I would have a hard time between the new Martin Logan Motion series and the Polk. I like both of them, but I like them both for very different reasons. I think the Martin Logan is a slightly nicer looking speaker, but and it's also a little bit more fun, a little bit more ener- you know, a little bit more energetic and 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 punchy. Um, but the Polks literally never sound bad to me, like ever. Is one, oh one thing though, the Polks do like a little bit of power, so that one may come down to your receiver or amplifier. Um, if you're kind of low on wattage or current, and it, or or your receiver or your amplifier doesn't really like a forum sp- a speaker, you're going to want to address that if you're going to the Polk, and maybe even a little bit if you're going with the Martin Logan. The Klipsch, the Klipsch will play nice with anything. So hope that helps, Ray. Thank you so much for your super chat. Adam, uh, Adam, yep. Uh, Adam writes, hola from Mexico. You're going on two plus weeks vacation, staying at a hotel. What gear do you pack and still have a good hi-fi experience? Like what hi-fi gear? Like what gear? I mean, to be perfectly honest, I probably don't pack anything because I'm on a vacation and I don't want to bring work with me. But I do understand what you're saying. Like maybe we're going to be sitting on the beach and, you know, maybe you want some tunes, you know. Bluetooth or something like that. Um, I'm bringing more than likely. I'm bringing either our little bows. Um, no, the s- hold, no. Just I'm oh. giving him options. <laughs> I'm giving the the little bows or the the Sonos Roam, um, which is like a hundred ninety nine dollar little handheld stick like thing that sounds amazing. Um, and if I really want to be bougie, or I know I'm going to be you know, staying someplace a little bit nicer or I'm renting like an Airbnb and I can have a little bit more control over the situation, then I probably bring my Bio Sound level, which is what we took to Palm Springs two years ago or whatever. But those are kind of my three go-to. There's like, it's like the little bows. I forget what it's called. Um, it's $99. It has like a belt loop. It, it's literally meant to just click on a bag and go and it sounds great. Then you step up to the roam, which is, you know, a little bit bigger, but still throw it in a bag, go. And then if you're like, oh, I want a little bit more of a higher, higher fidelity experience, the BO sound level. So, I agree. Um, guys, can you do me a favor? We're going to get back to the super chats, but please sit through this ad from our sponsor real quick. Please. Quick break to thank today's sponsor, Keeps. I know some of you out there can relate to the realization that you are slowly saying goodbye to your hair. I noticed mine thinning before I even turned 30. Embarrassed, I tried everything to hide the fact that my hair was slowly calling it quits, and I almost waited until it was too late. I thought there wasn't anything that I could do, but after some encouragement from Christy, and even a few of you, I found keeps and started to see new hair growth. It's worked so well that even a few of you have thought that I've had some work done. The truth is, Keeps FDA-approved treatment products, shampoos, and conditioners keep my hair thicker and healthier and at a price I can afford. Their subscription-based service means there are no time-consuming doctor or pharmacy visits. They make it easy to speak with a professional online before shipping your order discreetly to your door. Keeps has helped nearly 1 million men keep their hair, myself included. Hair loss stops with Keeps to get your special offer. Go to keeps.com forward slash Andrew Robinson or just click the link in the description and try it for yourself. Thank you. Thank you for watching uh, that. And thank you to Keeps for uh, just continuing to show their support for our channel. It really, really means a lot and it helps. And that will be the only interruption that uh, you'll endure today. Hopefully. Yeah, there's a there's a link in the description if yeah. you want to check it out. Yeah. Uh, before, I, it's, before it's too late. Before it's too late. So just thank you. Now let's get back to you guys. So Filbert writes... Uh, I can't join live, but wanted to say with all the respect I can give to Christy, I bought myself a pair of Focal Canta number twos last year. They match great with my Marantz Cinema 40 and I love them. Keep up the great work, you too. 
That's awesome. That is all that matters is that you love what you have. Yeah, and thank you so much for sharing your super chat with us, even though you couldn't be here. Hopefully. You'll watch the replay. Hopefully you're watching um, at some point. And if so, hello. (laughs) Chandler just became a member. Welcome. Appreciate that. Oh, Casey, uh, I believe, dished out a bunch of memberships. Oh, boy. Because Casey is amazing. Yeah. Uh, Looking to upgrade. Oh, wait. One one second. People are still saying your volume is low. My volume is low. Yes. Maybe it's just because my mic is closer. Yeah, so the way, uh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to get up. I'm going to fix something. I'm going to hit mute. I'm hitting mute so no one has to just bear. All right. Am I a little bit louder now? Let me know. Otherwise, I can adjust one more thing, but that's kind of it. When are you getting an OnlyFans account? That? What does that mean? I don't know. Jeff just is curious. Uh, I don't need one. <laughs> I, I, I have you guys. <laughs> okay. It sounds like it's better. Thank okay. you all. For um, being patient as we, yeah, you know, sorry. 26 episodes in, we, well, we're we still doing, gr- you know, we're okay. nailing it. Well, to be fair, to be fair, um, this setup that we're doing today, while it may look kind of the same, just outside of your field of view, everything is radically different. And I haven't fully been able to f- test and vet and do all the little stuff. And so we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants today because we've been doing construction all week and like I'm sitting on an Apple box on our coffee table uh, because it's just a mess right now. So I apologize if the the levels have been a little bit weird or today's a little bit off because we're flying by the seat of our pants, but we're trying here. We're making it, we're making the best we can. Okay. Anyway, back to the question. Looking to upgrade Quora 806s for a fuller sound. Are Kef R3 Metas much better overall? Others I should consider. No subs allowed. Thank you for everything. Well, we still don't have Kef R3 Metas in-house yet, so I don't know. My gut is going to tell me that compared to the 806, the R3 Meta should or likely will sound a little bit more fleshed out, more neutral and even. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily going to have more bass impact. My guess is, is it likely will have a little bit more sensation of bass because the cabinet is just going to be way better on that particular speaker. But that's about as good as I got, uh, unfortunately, because like I said, our our R3s have not arrived yet. So, yeah. But thank you. Thank you so much. Um, We've only been asking for them for like a year. Yeah, every, everyone else got a turn. Uh, Vadim. Unfortunately, I'm running like crazy today, but wanted to say thank you and wish everyone a fun stream, some really good questions and conversation. Also, name three most underrated dishes. Dishes y'all have had. Dishes. Food. Like food, yeah. Underrated. Underrated? Underrated. I'm going to move on to the next one, but underrated. Underrated food? I mean, no food is underrated as far as I'm concerned. Unless it's just like, it's either great or it's not. Yeah. I don't know. Underrated. What's the best meal you've ever had? Oh. Wow. Um, hmm. Boy, that one's tough, too. That one's tough. Um, uh, well, <laughs> I got to eat dinner with... Really good company, 
And so while the second time I ate dinner at this restaurant oh, was God. really good company, my company <laughs> uh, did not uh, approve um, of the dinner choice and they let me know. <laughs> um, but this other time that I ate there, it was really good. I wouldn't say it was the best food though. Um, I had a really nice meal at Carne Vino before it closed in Vegas of all places. Um, that was a restaurant that was owned by Mario Batali. Um, and he actually served us that night. And so like he was the executive chef and he, he personally, uh, handled our table that night and mm. that meal was pretty spectacular this was like 15 years ago <laughs> so um i don't know i don't know i mean the sandfish meals i okay she's she's telling me to wrap it up <laughs> um yeah let's move on thank you vadim uh green price appropriate streaming amp suggestion for kef r11 meta separates okay title connect and direct a must direct a must touch screen a plus listening to a lot of vocal centric music two sub suggestion okay streaming amp for r11 meta so that means you need you're looking actually for an integrated amp that does it all or separates are okay but you want Dirac. I mean, that just, I mean, that right there limits you kind of to NAD. Um, because I was going to say you should look at the Yamaha 2000A, but it doesn't have a screen. I mean, it has a small screen. It does stream, has a great app. It does have room correction, but it's not Dirac. But it also sounds, in my opinion, really good with R11 metas. Um, I don't think it does two subwoofers though. I think it only does the one. Um, so yeah, I think your NAD something, the Yamaha 2000A, um, this Rotel doesn't do, the Rotel 5000 doesn't do room correction. Um, and the Cambridge, the new Cambridge AXN100 streamer doesn't do room correction and it doesn't have analog inputs, but it's also a great streamer with your screen requirement. Yeah, that one's hard. You have, this is very, um, there's only going to be like two or three products that fit this bill and they may not be what you want. So it's, you're going to have to kind of play a little bit with what are you willing to live without? Like I would say the 2000A uh, from Yamaha is where I would start. I would really look into that, but then also look into whatever the equivalent NAD would be because that will give you direct. So Nick of Movie AV Impulse, can't hang today. Hope you both enjoyed yesterday together. What was your dream job if you're not doing it already? Mine was actually, I thought I could become a rapper and I tried for many years. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Um, you know, to be honest, um, I've kind of got, I've been very fortunate in that I've been able to sort of try my hand at kind of everything I've ever wanted to do so far. I don't know what my dream job is. I know there's a few more things I want to try. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to call him a job, but I don't know. I, I, if I had to pick of all the jobs that I've had, I do enjoy this one. This one has given me the most freedom. This one has given me the most, um, call it reward in, in terms of just, you know, being in charge of your own sort of destiny in a way. Um, I really did like working in the movie industry. I did enjoy making films and working with other filmmakers and making movies. Um, but boy, was that stressful. So I don't miss that. So yeah, I don't know. Mine was, when I was growing up, I wanted to be an actor. Mm -hmm. Which you did for a while. I mean, I tried. You did. You were, you were in stuff. I was in some stuff. No, you haven't seen anything. <laughs> If I could do something now, though, mm -hmm. 
that wasn't this. Mm -hmm. I would love to do interior design and like just buy houses and remodel them and, and redesign them and just collect them. I would, um, I would, I'm going to work really, really hard to become just stupid wealthy so that I can watch you do it one time <laughs> because m watching her make a decision, <laughs> she's oh. going to, we'll buy, we'll buy a house and we'll film it. We'll, all right. That's what we're going to do. We're going to buy a house. We're going to film it. She's going to be sitting in this empty box that hasn't been touched for like 30 years. And you're going to tune in week after week as she just tries to pick the flooring. We're going to have 200 videos. She's like, I think I got it. I think I got the flooring. I think I know what I want. Then they're going to lay it in. She's going to see it on 300 square feet and go, now don't be mad, <laughs> but I hate this floor. I hate, hate everything. <laughs> <laughs> because that is what we go through in our own house. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yes. But no, I, I, think you would be, I think you would be good at it. You do? I do. If for no other reason, then I know it brings you joy. Like... I don't know if you could design for another person. Probably not. But I think just being able to design for the sake of design and creation, mm -hmm. you would probably get a lot out of it. Yes. So, uh, Nick writes a second question. Now you know how I feel every time I drop a video and it doesn't work. That is the hardest part, trying to understand what people want. This goes back to the conversation at the start of the, at the, start of the show. Hold on, guys. I just realized my microphone. Sorry. Loud noise. There you go. Um, yeah, this goes back to the start of the show in that there's, like I said, there's there's several ways to look at YouTube. And I will say, I think the better advice while being able to identify the various uh, uh, groups of viewers, I think the best advice, though, is still always to do what makes you happy and stick to it. It may take a little bit longer. But inevitably, the right people will find you. And that's what we've really done here. And um, it's, uh, it's worked out. I mean, it does take a little bit of luck and obviously a lot of work. But I, I do feel like when you watch our channel and you watch our show, like you, there is an expectation there is a bar, there is all of this stuff, but we, we do try every single week to meet that because those are my standards. And then I just hope that, you know, over time, like you've come to expect certain things from us. And that's, that's what I'm saying is like, don't, don't try and tra chase what their, what trends are. Don't try and chase what you think might work. Because there's been plenty of times where everything on Google Trends, everything in the YouTube sphere is telling you, you should make this video. And we've done it maybe once or twice. And it never works. But when we do the thing that we're like, this video, no one's going to watch this. Like our video on chairs. I mean, did it get a million views? No. But guess what? That video has a run, a long, a watch time that would blow your mind like you guys watch that from start to finish and the repeat views of that video is off the charts like it's hilarious we have videos that have done millions of views but believe it or not things like the chair or home theater trends or or 10 things to make your you know 10 little tricks for your system like that stuff just keeps grinding and those are the videos i love doing you know so it's not always about the view count it's not always about the view count okay but good questions nick i hope you are able to watch the replay um okay oh i got to kc gifted 10 memberships thank you so much kc uh jeffrey writes what do you think of the morantz sacd 30n i have a rotel cd 11 tribute that is only a year old and i'm looking for something better to hook up to my macintosh ma 30 5300 i am the absolute wrong person to ask about cd players um and i i'm really sorry about that i have zero interest in cd players um 
My last CD player was the Mark Levinson number 512. It cost me $10,000. Um, and it was a beast. It was incredibly well made, but it was also 2007 or eight. That was literally the last time that I had a CD player. Um, I don't even have, I have four discs. I have four CDs left. Everything else has been ripped to a local hard drive or is in a Dune player. Um, I have four physical discs left in the off chance that we get a product that has a built-in CD player, like say the Audio Lab Omnia that we reviewed like a year or two ago. Um, that's it. I, I, I am not one of these people that is like, oh my God, CDs are coming back. I, I don't care. Um, and maybe that's short-sighted of me, or maybe I'm missing out on, an, on a new audience or whatever, but I just, it's one thing. It, what is that noise? I don't know. No, it's one thing for like, you know, a format to sort of see a little, a little rise, a blip from flatline, but I'm also a realist. I don't, I don't want to give people the false sense of, of hope that it's like, oh, CDs are going to come back the way that they always were. They're, they're not. They're not. And everyone can write articles like, oh, CDs had a, you know, a great year. And it's like, sure, but what? Oh, she's over here making faces. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, look at where they were versus where they are. And it's like, the it's the Mariana's Trench, how much they've fallen off. So I just, I just don't really invest in CDs. Do you know who Jeff Dean is um, over at Google? Jeff Dean? Yeah, apparently Jeff Dean is the head of AI research at Google. Uh-huh. And uh, everyone in our stream right now seems to know this person. And I, I guess he mentioned us? He mentioned our channel? Say what? Yeah. A lot of people are like, oh, I came... Jeff Dean mentioned your... I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, is he mentioning it like right now? Is I this... think he had a stream. I gotta go back up and okay. Someone fill me in, Austin. Yeah, fill Christy in because I still have to get to your questions. Uh, Jeff is a cool guy. Jeff is Austin. I mean, awesome. <laughs> okay. This stream... he just shared a link to it apparently. Okay, this oh. stream is all over the place today, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's all over the place. <laughs> Golf addict. Hi, Christy. Hi, Andrew. You guys are awesome. Thanks for. Uh, thanks for being you. Your videos make make me at ease. I'm a retired first responder with severe PTSD, mm -hmm. and your voices are very soothing. Aww. Thank you. It's been a rough year. You know what? Um, I really appreciate that. I really do. Um, I You don't have to explain anything to me. You don't have to go in any more detail. I'm glad that if, if we're a, a distraction or calming presence for you. I'm so grateful for that. I love that. I'm so grateful as someone that has worked with uh, people with PTSD as someone who has been diagnosed with it themselves. Uh, I, I can relate to good times and bad. And so I really appreciate that. And I hope it's still early. It's February, but I hope the rest of this year is better than the first start. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So I, I think there's time where everything can get better. But thank you. I, I really appreciate that. And we will continue to be here for you uh, as long as we can. Yeah, don't be so a stranger. Don't be a stranger. Um, and if there is anything anything that, you know, within you know reason, I'm just a dude on a silly webcam. Um, but if, you know, if you have Instagram or whatever, feel free to DM me. And we can chat. So, uh, righty. JR, Yamaha, NR2000A, or NAD M33, your guys' preferences. Oh, this, this will be controversial, I'm sure. Um, I would pick the Yamaha 2000A, even though I will go on record as saying that the M33, if you're into measurements and all of that jazz i'm sure the m33 measures better and is quote objectively better um having had both of them i would take the 2000a any day of the week i just i i'm i marvel at the m33 it is a 
It is a master class on, and it's called the master series. It is a master class on what can be accomplished when designers just go balls out. You know what I mean? But in doing so, I think they made the M33 too perfect. And for me, it sounds very clinical and sterile and sort of lifeless. Whereas the 2000A sounds like music. And when I listen to piano solos and jazz quartets and acoustic, well-recorded singer-songwriters, the 2000A sounds like they're there. And the M33 sounds like I'm sitting really close to the best headphones ever. And I kind of want the Yamaha sound. So. I agree. I would also pick the Yamaha. Yeah. But they're both great. They're both great. Uh, I have an Onkyo AVR connected to a Parasound P5 preamp and an A21 amp for left and right. Would replacing the AVR and P5 with a pre-pro make movies better? Excuse me. And would the pre-pro be as good as the P5 for two-channel music? Well, you have my old Parasound rig. I had that same exact stack, and I think that it's wonderful. Um, would going to a pre-pro make movies better well you know honestly it will it probably will sound very similar in the preamp department um to your p5 what's going to matter then is that you're going to have to add either more parasound a21s or like the parasound a51 or a52 i it, the names escape me it's been a while for the rest of your speakers for multi-channel and doing that is likely going to be the thing that you notice not necessarily that um you know the onkyo was letting you down it's just you're going to more dedicated power for each speaker what i would do is it sounds like your onkyo maybe your onkyo only has stereo preamp outs maybe that's the reason but if it has full preamp outs Go get yourself something like a Emotiva XPA5 or an XPA7. Use the preamp outs of your Onkyo um, and just you Onkyo Emotiva for music and movies and then add your Parasound stack back in and compare the two because that's probably going to be a more cost-effective way of deciding what's the right path for you than throwing certain things out, taking the chance only to be like, ah, crap, I wish I had those back. So that's what I would do. Pete, happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, Pete. Appreciate that. Roger R. Hi, Andrew. Christy, for a living room, watching the big game, some streaming and music, Sonos Arc or the Sevens. I already have a dedicated TV room. Um, watching the big game, some streaming and some music. Sonos Arc or, or the, the Sevens. sevens. Oof. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I, and I'm, I'm saying this because I'm so like, I'm going through a phase right now where if, if any, if there's any like one box or one wire that I can get rid of, I'm going to, and the thought I can never do it for the channel, but the thought of just like a Sonos arc mounted to the bottom of my television and it's just clean and it's done knowing how good that bar can sound that's probably where I would go, especially if you're not trying to recreate stereo hi-fi music with two separate speakers, because that's not your focus. I would just get it an arc or an equally capable sound bar below your television. Call it a day. Uh, yeah, I have to say I agree with you. I yeah. would. I love the sevens. They're you great. Can, you yeah. can definitely put them in a living room. Sure. And enjoy them for all the uses that yeah. you've mentioned. But I believe the Sonos Arc will just give you a little bit more um, across the board. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit more flexible. Yeah. And it's going to be tidier. You know, like I said, you can get mounts that mount it directly to the bottom of the television or you mount it to the wall just below the TV. And, and, you, a, and you can expand it. Yeah, you can add you Era want. 300s if you want or a sub. Um, yeah, it's just... Uh, I think I would go that route. I think I would go that route. Uh, okay. Oops, it jumped on me. Not to fear. I'm I'm used to this. 
Uh, Jacob, have the Klipsch RP8000Fs got the Lintons, but didn't really like them. I guess I really like air and detail, though I do like the Linton base. Any recommendations? Two to three thousand dollars per pair. KLH five something Focal. Okay, so you went from a lively, fun, more live sound speaker in the Klipsch to a Linton, which is going to be more reserved. So really what you experience would be like people that went from Klipsch to say the Polgar 700. And then they're like, oh, but all that sparkle, that that energy is gone. The speaker's dull and lifeless. It's not. It's just that's the difference between a V-type curve, even though Klipsch has slowly been bending that curve a little bit more straight. It's still V compared to the Linton, which is going to be more like that Harman curve, right? And so that is usually the first thing that people are going to say is, is like, oh, I miss that air and all of that stuff. And it's like, it's not that it wasn't there in the Linton. It's just the Linton wasn't accentuating it. And so if you know you like the Klipsch sound, then the KLH5s can be good and they do have the treble attenuation and all of that on the back they do require pretty substantial amplifier to really make that speaker sing um i would look at the martin logan yeah i was gonna say the martin logan any of the motion either xt or just the regular uh the one step down from that even you could go with the foundation i mean that's right in line financially uh, with the Klipsch 8000F and the 8000F Mark II. Um, so Martin Logan Foundation or Motion X or XT. Focal, um, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, the, what's the least expensive Focal? Is it the Tiva or is it the Vestia? Which one is the cheap one? Well, there's the Tiva and then yeah. there's the, it's called Vestia. I know which one is the cheap one because oh. they're like a hundred dollars off, but the cheapest Focal entry level one, I think it I'm, is better. Maybe it's I don't know. Honestly, exactly. their names are so dumb. <laughs> right, the cheapest entry level Focal series is the better one. Um, although we just took delivery of a higher end Focal that we'll be bringing you. Um, but yeah, maybe Martin Logan. I don't think the KLH, especially if you were already in the Linton camp, I'm not sure that that's the right thing. You know what? Someone left, a, well, not like it's the first time I've seen this, but mm -hmm. um, someone recently left a comment on our Linton review. I wonder if it was you, Jacob, that said that they were muffled sounding, and so they were sending them back or selling them. Mm -hmm. And I've had, I've seen people leave comments like that, and I'm like, what are you talking about? Look, if you're coming from something like, again, if you're coming from something like a Klipsch and you go to a, a, a Wharfdale or you go to um, like a Kef or um, a Polk, you're probably going to think that it sounds veiled and muffled because you used to have these types of opinions. You would be like, oh, it just doesn't, it feels slow. Like it feels slow because when you take that rise out of the tweeter, it, your brain needs time to readjust, you know? Well, sure. But there's a difference when, with something not having like a quickness to it, to sounding muffled and. Well, it can also just be how the person set it up in their room too. Like you may have an overly dampened room, in which case a bright speaker is going to overcome, say, thick carpet, plushy furniture, you know, stuff like that. But if you're in a reflective room, a bright room, and you have a bright speaker, you're going to look at someone like myself and go, Sonus Faber hurts my ears. And I'm like, Sonus Faber is music to my ears. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, you, there is a little bit of, of give and take with this kind of stuff. Um, which is why at the end of the day, so many people really lean on, well, you want the most neutral speaker because it's going to play nice in the widest variety of rooms. And that is, that is largely true, except that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what the listener is ultimately going to always want. And so we get to play this cat and mouse game, this balancing act sort of a thing. Man, speaking of the Sonos Fobbers, mm -hmm. we were, we were, uh, we, oh, guys, 
new show alert. There's this new, there's this new, my favorite thing to do is watch shows. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's called The New Look. Yeah, about uh, Dior and Chanel. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's the history of World War II when the Nazis invaded Germany and uh, or, sorry, invaded sorry, Paris, Paris. France. Yeah. And yes, it was how Dior and other designers survived. Survived and like what they were willing to do in terms mm-hmm. of their creation. It's super interesting so far. Mm-hmm. This the the soundtrack is excellent and yeah. we were watching this on our Lumina 2s and the Rotel 5,000. 5,000 last night. And I was like, damn, these are good. Like every time we hook those up, the they're Lumina twos, so good. The Lumina 2s, I mean, they're, they're an embarrassment of riches. They're an absolute embarrassment of riches. They're some of my favorite thousand-ish dollar bookshelf speakers that I've ever heard. Ever. <laughs> they're amazing. It's called The New Look. The New Look. The yeah. New Look, Lisa. Yeah. It's on uh, Apple Plus or Apple, Apple TV. Apple TV. Yeah. Um, so if you don't have to own an Apple TV to watch it, if you have Google TV, you can just download the Apple Plus uh, app and it'll it'll work. It has Juliette Binoche in it and Emily Mortimer. And Emily um, Mortimer. The main guy that plays Dior is. Um, he was the villain from Ready Player One. Mendelssohn. Um, ben. Ben Mendelssohn. Um. Um. The other guy that plays a role in it, too, um, John Malkovich. John Malkovich is in it. And what's her face from Game of Thrones? Uh, the girl. Oh, Maisie Williams. Maisie Williams is in it. Anyway, it's, it's a good show. And Highly they recommend. It, they shoot it open gate. Oh, my God. It's so beautiful. Yeah, they shoot it open gate. So it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty impressive. Uh, definitely something, if you have a good TV, will reward you. All right. Jason, please describe sensitivity and the difference between dB and ohms. Both can make it easier to drive. Okay. All right. So I have to be very careful here because while I'm sure I can break this down in a way that everyone's going to go, yes, there's, there's probably one or two of you in there where it's like, well, technically, semantically, that's not correct. So... Here we go. I'm going to do my best. When a speaker is rated at a certain sensitivity, let's say, for example, 91 dB. It used to be 91 dB at one watt and one meter. Now it's 91 dB at a voltage. The two are interchangeable. So let's just stick with 91 dB at one watt, one meter, because I actually think that's easier to understand. And all all that means is that that speaker should be able to play to 91 decibels of volume with one watt of power from a distance of one meter. So if you were to put a, an SPL meter three feet from that speaker, feed it one watt, it should, put, it should pump out 91 decibels. And that is what that means. Now, the thing to keep in mind is as you add distance, you have to add power. And so as distance and volume increases, so does power. And for every 3 dB increase in volume, you need to double your power. So to go from 91 to 94 dB of volume from one meter, it would take two watts. But to go from 94 to 97, it would take four. To go from 97 to 100, it would take eight. Now, of course, as we add distance, we're going to need more power as well. But what that means, though, is that 90% of the time when you're listening to any speaker, it's only really probably using a handful of watts. Even if your amplifier has 300 watts of power, total power, right? And even if the speaker itself under amplifier recommendations says 25 to 200 watts, that doesn't mean that you're feeding it 200 watts all the time every second of every day. 90% of the time that you have ever listened to any loudspeaker ever, it's been probably percolating on five or 10 watts, to be honest, like maybe 15. Why you need a beefy amplifier is to go from 
the tone of my speaking voice right now that you're listening to is probably in the vicinity of 40 to 50 dB. To go from this to THX level 100 dB in an instant, you're going to take all of that power and force it in, you know, force it through the speaker basically in an instant. And then you're going to cut it back off because it's just a dynamic peak. If you don't have the power to make that peak happen, then the speaker clips and damage can occur if this keeps happening. And so this is why like more sensitive speakers, speakers 89, 90, 91, 92, tend to be a little bit more engaging, tend to maybe be a little bit more responsive when using lower power or less, lesser amplifiers, but it doesn't mean that they still don't need quality amplification. Now, ohms is resistance. Like how much resistance is the, the, the speaker giving the amplifier? And I always say that as the ohms go down, something becomes difficult, more difficult to drive. And I know some people, audiophiles especially, do not like when people say a four ohm load is easier to drive because in reality it's less resistance however it becomes harder it, look at it uh, someone explained it to me someone much smarter than me explained it to me this way when you're driving on ice the tires have less resistance but they also have less traction and it's easier to go like this so you have to you have to exert more control you know Whereas when you're on a dry road, let's talk about eight ohms or whatever, maybe it's a little bit easier, but it takes, you know, you're, you're not spinning your wheels as much. I, I mean, I get that analogy. I do. I just go with as you drop in the ohms department, you need a little bit more capable amp, an amp that can deal with that resistance, an amp that can deal with that load. Um, and that usually comes at a cost, usually comes at, you know, a lot of different things. So you can still have a, I mean, there's a ton of really great speakers that are four ohm speakers that are like 91 dB efficient. And I would just say, you need to really make sure that you have an amplifier that likes four ohms. For example, my Audio Lab 8300 XP stereo amplifier. That is stable as an amplifier down to two ohms. So four ohms is right in its wheelhouse. You know, you're not really taxing it. Um, but like other amplifiers that I've had in the past, they don't like to go much below four. And so if you have a speaker that maybe dips down into like 3.4 range, it's going to do it. You don't have to worry about it. But you may notice with those types of speakers, an amplifier like the Audio Lab, in certain situations, like why does this sound so much better? better, so much more confident compared to maybe an amplifier that has twice the power. Like the, 80, the 8300 is only like 100 watts per channel or 120 watts per channel, but I'll be damned if it doesn't often sound more powerful than a 300 watt amplifier. And you run into this with like the Yamaha 2000A. I think that was only 90 or 100 watts per channel, but it sounds more confident and, 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 and sure of itself no matter what speaker you're, you're using, um, compared to say some 200 and 300 watt amplifiers that, that's a weird noise, that you know don't like anything too close to four ohms. So that's how I would, uh, that's how I would try and explain that. Hope that helps. And I'm sure Christy's already getting people going, no, that was wrong. <laughs> Actually, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Uh, next question. Hello, love your videos. Do decent surround sound headphones exist for watching Atmos movies at night? I surround sound headphones. I, oof. I mean, I've heard some spatial audio demos on just normal headphones and it's kind of, it's a neat effect. I wouldn't say it's surround sound. It's more just phase effects, but I honestly, I don't know. Um, I don't know. There was some device eons ago that I missed, I guess I sat, I did a demo of once and made a comment of, and someone really didn't like that. I made a comment about it. Um, remember that guy that what? was, 
the you headphone we got an email a couple of weeks ago uh i i sat for a headphone demo like a decade ago with the guy that was doing like spatial mapping with headphones and he put it on kickstarter and they used my pull quote or they used a quote oh, for me yeah. without my permission to sell this thing um i had forgotten that i was even that i even demoed this thing um where are you going oh excuse me bless you oh you, my goodness can you do me a favor yeah that window's open in the hallway oh can you close that um anyway i don't know of any um i don't know of any surround sound headphones i'm not the 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 premier headphone guy unfortunately yeah, that, that guy was upset because he never got his product and he didn't get, he couldn't get his money back. And so the email was like, are you, are, is this a scam? Yeah, or did, were I, you, help, were did you, I help scams, scam were, people? And I'm, and we had to like Google it and all that. And I was like, holy crap, this whole company was like using a pull quote from literally like a 30 second, four, you know, 30 second demo, like at like a show, like here, put these on. And I was like, oh wow, that's kind of cool. And, you know, Andrew Robinson, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. And they went to Kickstarter with it, apparently raised a bunch of money and then didn't deliver anything. And well, I, well, the I had no idea this was happening. <laughs> the, so a decade after Yeah, the this, funny, not so funny part about this entire thing is that this person placed their order like in 2017. Yeah. And was just now like, I, do you think I'm going to get it? It's like, like, do you think I'm going to get my product or is yeah. this a scam? It's like, dude. <laughs> no it's not happening yeah it's probably not happening if they're not returning your emails like i don't yeah. i don't you you knew you knew the answer to that question yeah it was it was weird for like an hour on a random saturday like we had to go deep because i was just trying to figure out like what he was talking about and like we had to like you google certain things about the company and nothing comes up and yeah it's a whole deal i just I don't like being accused of like, are you are you part of a scam? And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> what are you talking about? All right, Chris Veltman, hello. Advice for deckwares: two point three watts per channel amp. What's your favorite floor standing and bookshelf pairing? I am assuming floor standers are far better match. Thank you. Um, my favorite pairing for the deckware, uh, honestly, has been our corn walls. Um, I really like the corn walls with, uh, the deckware, but I also really like the corn walls with the deckware when I have my mini DSP SHD acting as a preamp in front of it. That lets me do all of the, uh, room EQ that I like. That's a match made in heaven. Um, and it's pretty great. Um, bookshelf wise, you know, I really enjoyed the deckware on, I mean, the deckware to me just sounds good with everything. So long as you have a reasonable expectation, Katie had to shake off a reasonable expectation of the volume output. Um, so as long as you know, you're not going to shake the foundations, you can pair two watts with darn near anything. Um, I remember putting my deckware on some Tecton speakers once. I thought that was pretty good. Um, Klipsch is good. I've even liked the deckware with my older Paradigm Signature S2s and S8s. Again, just so long as I kept my expectations of like, okay, I'm not going to get to 100 dB peaks. As long as I kept that in check, I, I thought it did really well. So um jose it seems to me that the they okay seems to me that the object audio battle went to dolby atmos what do you think would be the next thing codec format for dolby and dts um i think they're just going to continue to push the envelope with respect to probably real-time room mapping and room equalization i think that's really the next frontier is taking existing sound but then really using like active active um methods of and sony was playing with this a little bit on their latest tvs we didn't really get into it in our reviews but because i know it's kind of a touchy subject as far as like oh i don't want my tv 
or my receiver or anything watching me. And I get it, I do. But I think we're going to have to probably lean into that a little bit um, as a collective we, not just like a channel, but collective we because what that's enabling your television or the receiver or a speaker or something to, quote, see you um, enables them to have a clearer picture of where you are in the three-dimensional space based on the information it gathered when it did its sound field testing. And it can then tailor the sound mix kind of to where you are. Bang & Olufsen has been doing this with beam staring and, and stuff like that um, for a number of years. And I just think that that mixed with surround sound processing like Atmos is where the next frontier lies. So. Uh, da, 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 da. Bodie McBoatface, what's the best way to approach bass management in two channel setups? Mm, easiest way possible. I'm the kind of the guy of path of least resistance. If I know I need to use a sub, uh, I always kind of, I personally don't like controls on subwoofers. Um, you need them. I would never design a sub without physical controls because not everyone has bass management in their AVR or preamp or whatever. Um, I just, I don't like them because they're never really accessible. So I'm a big fan of all the subs that do it on an app as well. Um, but I tend to really like to keep all of my adjustments in one spot. So if the preamp or AVR or processor has base management, I set all of the stuff on the subwoofer accordingly and then just do everything in one, sp one spot, hopefully with a remote. So that's, that's how I handle it. But then again, I'm also kind of a stickler in that I'm not going to actively go out and seek out two-channel products that don't have modern features. Like, I know there's this whole camp of hi-fi where it's like, no, no, it's an all-analog preamp. It doesn't do anything like that because reasons. That's never appealed to me, um, you know? And so in those instances, you know, like uh, where it's just like maybe you have two sets of preamp outs and so that you can use a second set for a subwoofer and another set for a separate amplifier. Um, then you're doing it all on the back of a subwoofer. Or in my case, I'd be running it into a mini DSP 2x4 or SHD and doing EQ and doing all the bass management inside of um, mini DSP. That's just me. Um, let's see, where did I leave off? Here we go. Uh, Craig, is there a $500 home theater receiver you would recommend? I think the Sony AN1000 is close to 500 bucks. I think it's close. I think it's like six. Um, that's a good one. I think the Onkyo 5100 is also close to 500. It might be 599. That's an insane one because, yeah, that one's great. Pioneer 305, I think is, again, it's not 500 bucks. The Yamaha A4A might be like $550, and that is also a good receiver. So look at those four. See which one works for you. Okay. Bodie McBoatface is back. Can you recommend songs to experience a wide soundstage? My top genres are jazz, classic rock, movie scores, and acoustic strings. I listen for soundstage, like really want to play with it. I listen to a lot of electronica um, because they can put sounds wherever they want. And since most of them are largely synthesized, synthetic, or sampled, they get really creative. Um, two lanes... May not be everyone's cup of tea. Uh, Anima may not be everyone's cup of tea. But boy, they sure do play with three-dimensional sound out of two speakers. Um, drifting by two lanes, if your speakers have good dispersion and your room doesn't collapse a soundstage, oh man, you're, you're going to hear. You're going to hear stuff near your ceiling. 
Um, Enema, uh, various tracks. I don't know which one's off the top of my head. Um, again, same kind of thing. It'll go way back. It'll go high. It'll go side, damn near around you. It's uh, pretty impressive. Uh, just upgraded my vintage stereo to a Marantz model 140, 3200 preamp and had my ah moment. What was your first stereo you thought this is it? Um, I, I mean, I, I have to admit, I had a lot of fun with like my very first like hi-fi home theater setup was JBL G 400s, um, with the matching center and a Yamaha Dolby ProLogic surround receiver. Um, I remember getting hearing sounds out of that, that I was, you know, I, I had a lot of fun. My friend's Bang & Olufsen system, though, which he bought around the same time, uh, I had to slum it at Best Buy. He got to go to Bang & Olufsen. Um, his system was probably the first time that I ever sat in utter awe and went, whoa, that is, that's a magic trick. That's what that is. That's a magic trick. So the next thing that I got after my JBLs that came close, probably Paradigm Mini Monitor V2s with a Rotel integrated. I was like, oh, wow, what a step up. Like clarity, dimension, separation, soundstage. Wow. You know, speakers just disappearing. Like I'm looking right at it, but I don't, it doesn't seem like the sound's coming from it. That would probably be the, the, the first one. Yeah. Uh, Chris Feldman, what's your most prized vinyl record? Um, have a record that was given to me by the late, great, um, a late, great friend of mine. Uh, what is it called? It is the greatest jazz concert ever. And it was given to me by Michael Gottlieb. Um, that would probably be it. It's not like a, it's not like a great, like, I don't think the album's like worth anything. I just, it's my favorite, you know, I don't play it all that often because it's very well loved. Um, but yeah. And I have an original, I have an original pressing of, uh, Nirvana's unplugged MTV unplugged the original pressing and my dog ate a corner, not Katie, another dog that I had, um, whole other life, uh, ate the corner of the sleeve. So it's definitely not worth anything. Record was fine, but I also really, uh, pride have pride in that record. That's probably, that's probably it. Those two. Mr. J, thank you so much for your support. Uh, speaking of Sonus Faber, any experience with the Sonetto 3? <laughs> debating, but admittedly, I debating it, but admittedly, because I think they're beautiful. Um, only in showrooms. I we have not had Sonettos in house. Hopefully that that changes this year. Hopefully we can do some more fun Sonus Faber stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I think their stuff is phenomenal. Unfortunately, I've had to go other places to experience it. <laughs> Although we do have a Sonos Faber video coming up this Sunday. This Sunday. You'll be green with envy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's, it's not a Sonetto. All righty. Got the TCL QM898 and the Cinema 50 from your insightful content. Thank you. Clips 504C2 as a center, Randerac Live plus bass control on 5.1.4, but can't select Dialog Enhancer. Dialog seems muffled. Any advice? Hmm. Um... Well, unfortunately, I don't have a Cinema 50 in front of me, and I have not had a Cinema 50 in front of me for some time. And when we had the Cinema 50, the base Dirac update was not it was not a thing. It, it was coming, but it, it hadn't been implemented yet. So I don't know if there's a bug that may be hindering the dialogue enhancer because of all that. Have you... So if you turn Dirac off, do you get access to the Dialog Enhancer again? Would be the first question that I have. 
And if you do, then there's some kind of communication error between the Dirac and the dialog enhancer. And if you want to run Dirac and have the base control, knowing that dialog enhancement goes off, then what I would do is probably look at the Dirac curves for your center speaker, maybe bump up or kind of put a, uh, an anchor point uh, between one and two kilohertz or starting at one kilohertz. And if it rolled it off too much, maybe bring it back more to a straight line or level. Um, you could do that. You could also raise the volume of your center speaker one and a half to three dB in the menus with the level um, or do both of those things. And that can kind of be an artificial uh, dialogue enhancer if Dirac is some in some way uh, keeping you from having that functionality. Bodie McBoatface, will we see any more Room EQ Wizard videos? Um, maybe. Nothing on deck. Nothing in the immediate present or future. Um, maybe. It's always something that I'm playing with. I use it almost every day uh, for one, one reason or another. So if something strikes my fancy, like maybe. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Christy coming in with the... Yeah, the truth bomb. Like, the truth bomb. I think the last one we did... The first one did very well. The second one, no one watched. And mm -hmm. it was even arguably even more work than the first one. Yeah. Um, to do those kind of right and to kind of break them down in ways that make them less scary and approachable, I mean, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. Um, I never say never, so. I do. She does, <laughs> but that doesn't that doesn't mean anything. Uh, Macintosh seventy two hundred or Parasound JC five and a preamp for JBL L one hundred Classic. I mean, nothing against Parasound. I love their products. I'm a huge fan, but that seventy two hundred, like if I, if I didn't have a channel, that is one of the amps that I would seriously look at long term and just go. Do I want this? Do I want an R1000? Or do I want, you know, there's only like three or four amplifiers really that for me, for like a forever type setup that I would consider. And that's actually one of them. That 7200 is, mm -hmm, it's so good. Got to take a drink. Man, my new glasses can't get here fast enough. Uh, bookshelf speakers that have very clear voices, a little bit of meat in the voices, punchy, clean bass, and it's not fatiguing in the highs. Is it still the Kef? Another recommendation. I mean, Kef, the Kef, Kef everything right now, in my humble opinion, they're kind of not, they can't go, they're not wrong. Like they're just nailing it. Um, but again, man, I think Sonus Faber also nails it. Is it a little bit more lively, a little bit brighter than Kev? Yeah, but it's not in a way that I find to be overly aggressive. And so I, if given the option right now in our house, like, oh, you know, you have five or six different pairs of speakers, like, but you can listen to whatever you want. I'm picking either our Sonus Fabers or I'm picking our Kev's. Because I just think they sound great no matter what. I also like Q Acoustics, um, although we haven't had a pair of their bookshelf speakers. In a while. In a while. Um, but their towers... The Concept 50 is freaking great. Yeah, they're not overly large. Mm -hmm. So if you can accommodate that, I would definitely look at those. The, the Concept 50s are some of my favorite speakers. Um, the 5040s are also very good. They're le they're a little less expensive than the Concept 50, so you could potentially, you know, mm -hmm. check those out. Yeah. Hello, Kef R3 Plus Audio Lab 8300 XP. Five to ten minutes of playing at 90 to 100 dB, and the speakers smell like burnt oil. Should I be concerned? Yeah, that's not normal you probably need to reach out to Kef and you need to talk to technical support 
I don't know did, if you bought your kefs new, if you bought them used, what condition they were in. So I can't say, but I will tell you this much. I've had R11s connected to that exact same amp and I've hit 100 dB peaks, maybe not for 10 straight minutes, but they definitely don't smell like burning oil. So yeah, um, that sounds like a problem. That's <laughs> definitely something that you need to reach out to either your dealer, mm -hmm. the person that may, if you bought them secondhand, you need to reach out to them or you need to call or email Kef and get to the bottom of it. That's, but I can't, I can't help you anything beyond that, but that's not normal. All right. Ray, what was the last movie you saw that made you look at your home theater and say, wow. I said that just last night. I mean, the show we were watching. Yeah, the new, the look, new look TV show. Yeah, I, that, we, that that's a reason to own a big screen and a and a nice nice sounding something. Not, you don't have to have like a billion channels, but just really solid two three channel system, really good sound bar, and a really nice tight screen. That's, yeah, literally, we had a the Sonos Faber Lumina twos. Yeah, on the Rotel with amp. our with our TCL 98 and I was in heaven. Oh man, it sounded awesome. Yeah, it was great. There was some orchestral string. Yeah. Um, um, what do you call it? Like sc the score? score? yeah. Oh, it sounded so good. I mean, but we, I, I caught up on Deadpool 1 and 2 this week. Same setup. And I was pleasantly surprised. No, 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 no subwoofer. I was even like, Google, our, our Google is kind of freaking out this week. I'm sorry <laughs> um, if anyone heard that. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Katie's uh, back there. Oh, hi, Katie. <laughs> you, let's see. Which way do I have to go? Oh, hold on. I'm going to make this question raise. Question go away. And, oh, shoot. <laughs> there she is. Katie. There she is. Come closer. <laughs> <laughs> She's just standing there, uh, like looking. There she is. There she is. All right, <laughs> go lay down. No, Daddy's working. Go lay down. <laughs> All right. Um, here we go. I tried D and D. Okay, I tried D and D eight C smart powered speakers and was floored. The tech and sonic results they bring are biblically impressive. Hopefully, you review them one day. I'd love to hear your thoughts, Genelec. I have no idea what speaker you're referring to. Um, hmm. Yeah, I have no idea what speaker that is. I'm going to have to Google that. Uh, Genelec makes great stuff. Dutch though. and Dutch. Dutch and Dutch. I still don't know what that is. Yeah, going to have to Google that. Uh, Genelec, though, thumbs up for me. They make great stuff. I uh, appreciate it. I'm going to thank you for giving me something to look into. <laughs> Hey, the, the chat that you took down when you were trying to show yeah, Katie, yeah. did you answer that? Yeah, the mo like the show that we were just watching. Okay, I just wanted to make Deadpool. sure. Um, if I, I can go back to it and say that, to be honest with you, though, a lot of films that I've purchased recently should have, I should have been wowed, like, we, like Napoleon. Like, I should have been wowed by all of it, you know, Ridley Scott and period. That movie sucked. That movie was bad it was not good that was awful the the prequel to uh uh hunger games whoa nelly terrible um yeah with just a rash of garbage <laughs> you know makes it real hard to sort of like be like this is what you should invest in i watched mm. fried green tomatoes the other day fabulous and it was awesome it was fabulous i love that movie we when i was growing sunday. up yep we referenced it on sunday because it was actually fabulous we've been watching more i don't want to say older movies like turner classic or anything like that but 10 15 years old type stuff we've been kind of clicking back on some of those because I don't know. I just lately the new stuff, I'm just like, yeah, we're getting old. I don't know. I just, <laughs> I'll say this much. Technology has gotten so good and yet things look so bad, but you go back and look at films from 10 or 15 years ago before they had click a button and 
you know, a dinosaur appears and somehow it just looks better. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. I want to express my gratitude to both of you. How are you guys doing? When everything becomes overwhelming, what do you do to recharge? Oh, well, that's such a great, that's, that's such a great, a great question. question. Um, thank you for a, your support. Thank you for asking. Um, yeah. When, when things get overwhelming, <laughs> what do you do to recharge? Um, well, I get real antsy and I want to tear stuff apart. And, uh, yeah. Or I'll go work out and I'll just pick a longer workout than, you know, maybe I want to, but I'll just, I'll go into the tempo room and he say, just anger bangs yeah, just, the weights, just make it hurt. Um, uh, some, I mean, honestly, honestly to unwind or unplug, I literally do unplug. Like I don't want to turn any of the stuff on. I will just say, we're not going to film today or I don't want to work on the thing today and I'll find some mm, trivial task. Like I'm going to go clean the garage. Um, and it helps. It does. It helps. Um, I work out. You work out. I go on a walk yeah. or I'll sit outside in my hanging swing chair. And just fall down Pinterest. Yeah, I, I'll pin things. Yeah. I pin everything. I, I like to plan yeah. and organize stuff yeah. uh, and save stuff <laughs> <laughs> and listen to music while I'm doing it with Katie. Yeah. Um, and I like to uh, go, I like to go on vacation. Well, I was going to say as well, like, or, you know, the, even in, short trips. Yeah. In the immediate, these are the things we'll do day to day. Um, but if it's like piled up and it's getting like really stressful, um, we'll get the hell out of Dodge. We'll literally jump in the car and, you know, go somewhere, um, spend a two, three days, like get a hotel, spend two or three days and just not do this. And that, that does wonders. It really does. Like I, I often come back going, okay, now I'm ready to, you know, face it again. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful that when the, the backyard project is happening, we had like surveyors here and everything today and we learned that our property is a little bit bigger than we thought <laughs> so we've got a couple of new decisions to make um but i think like once that's done that's going to be very therapeutic and also be another place to kind of go and just unplug which is why i'm super excited for it and i know it's still another three or four months away from being done but <sighs> It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. It's going yeah. to be awesome. We're getting so, a pool. We're we're trying to basically, because we do work from home and we do work a lot and we kind of always have to be on, we've just decided like we're going to invest in the house and turn it into our resort. And that's kind of the goal and make it as just as comfortable and hospitable and everything is possible and phase one is officially like there's crews here it's taken 18 months but it's it's happening and we already have ideas and plans for phase two which will probably be like two years from now um and then it, someone asked earlier like or nick i think movie av impulse nick uh asked like dream job or whatever i would love to get to play architect we've designed a house a guest house uh, that we would really love to build. Um, and we have the property for it. So hopefully in the next 10 years total, we get to do all of those things. So, all right, let's move on. Great question though. And I really do appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. Uh, DSD compared to high resolution PCM, any opinions? Can you hear the difference? I don't have any opinions. That's a level of minutia. PCM. It's different. Uh, like, formats of, of digital music it, it's a it, look it's all gonna look i've i've heard dsd discs that sound amazing 
but I've also heard really bad recordings that have been upmixed to quote DSD that are indistinguishable from a CD. And I've even heard some really great CDs that sound better than any essay CD, but I've also heard MP3 320 kbps tracks on like maple shade records to see if you want to buy their cd that somehow sound better than a red book cd so it, it it really really comes down to how the original source was recorded how it was mastered and what's being done to it as it's you know getting put to whatever delivery system that you want to listen to it's not an automatic thing that, oh, DSD is just always better. It's not. SAC is just always better. It's not. It, it, it all starts with the source. Garbage in, garbage out. And if you have gold, you're going to end up with gold. So, uh, Let's see. If you were an amplifier and your wife was a speaker, what would you want to be? What? <laughs> if you were an amplifier and your wife was a speaker, what would you all be? I don't oh my know. God. I don't know. Something pretty. <laughs> <laughs> something pretty and probably something not ridiculously stupid. Yeah, it'd probably be like the Technics uh, R1000. Yeah. And I don't know. Some <laughs> nice looking speaker. Yeah. Fun question, though. Yeah. That's, you know what? You win the award today, uh, Holmes, for in 20, this will be my 23rd year. No, 24th year in the business because I started in 2000. This is my 24th year. Man, you're old. As an AV journalist, <laughs> and you have managed to ask me a question that I have never been asked. So, everyone, round of applause for Sir Holmes. All right. Oh my God. Do you need help? More than you realize. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, the, has this been a good stream? I, I don't, I, I, I don't know. Like I'm having fun, but I also don't know if I'm being as helpful as I hope I am. I feel like you're a little slow today. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Well, that means I gotta pick it up. Uh, new guy have uh, SL thirty big bookshelf and NHT two point three both dad speakers. Big bookshelf versus medium towers. What do you guys pick? What are the SL thirties? Um, a big a big bookshelf is gonna to me is gonna be like a source point eight or source point ten or something like a Linton, mm -hmm. where it's like it can't sit on the floor by itself, but it might as well should be probably a tower or like a KLH five or whatever. KLH five, yeah. yeah. Heresies. I'm probably more medium tower just because it's at that point it might actually be a space saving thing and just easier to finagle. But that's not to say that that makes it better or worse. It's just a visual lifestyle kind of ease of living thing. So, uh, oh, holy crap. I am not as behind as I thought. I'm actually caught up. Wow. My new Concept 50s just arrived, and they are awesome. I exclusively ex exclusively relied on your advice based on my listening preferences, and you nailed it. Thanks so much. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, look, and it's not I, – I, I don't say that's awesome because, like, I want to pat myself on the back. I just really like it when people are happy with their choices, and I do believe that the Concept 50s are – phenomenal speakers and i'm just glad that uh, they worked out for you i really really am so everyone's saying it's been a fun stream like oh my god he's old wait what <laughs> i've been over here answering so i i i have an ability now to make sure that i kind of don't miss any of your all super chats but that also means that i miss some of this other i'm old I said that. I think the person is repeating me. <laughs> Did you miss it? Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. He's old. I'm dead or something. Are we going to open up an Airbnb, Chris? Um, <laughs> Probably not. We thought about it. We did. 
We did honestly thought of thought about it. We even secured the naming rights to a couple of potential things. Um, and we even went so far as to have kind of a conversation with a couple of manufacturers about what we might be able to do. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I. I don't think the idea is dead. I just don't think Airbnb is the right way to go. But experience-based ex, ex, experience uh, trips around hi-fi can be kind of cool. And so it is still something that I'm kicking around. But uh, I don't know. I don't think Airbnb, I don't I don't. I don't know. I, I mean, mean, it's going to get, it's getting harder and harder to be able to even have one of those. Right. Depending on where you live. Yes. So. And especially at the interest rate, it makes it even more difficult. Yeah. But I would love to, like I said earlier in the stream, I would love to pick up a property. Yeah. Just for the ability to, you know, renovate it and document that pro process well we're doing that with this house yeah you guys haven't seen any of it yet but yeah. we are doing it um like this like that girl in in canada that we just stumbled oh. upon so this gr this girl i don't know what her <laughs> name is jenny maybe she's a crocheting channel but that's not why how we found yeah her. she's based out of canada and she most of her videos are about sewing and yeah crocheting which yeah. is not of an interest to me for sure but she has a great personality and she bought an abandoned mid-century home somewhere in canada yeah. it is a mess oh yeah it's, you guys it's terrible and she's going to renovate it and she's starting to document it on her channel and she has such a fun interesting quirky personality that she's just enjoyable to watch well yeah because it's it's interesting to watch content like that and admittedly, if, if people are ever, I know I get, I get this question on Instagram all the time. Like, you know, who, who do you subscribe to? N no one in like our space. Um, I subscribe to every home reno decor woodworking channel I can. Um, and I love it because last night before we started watching the Apple show mm -hmm. and, uh, G Papa, I'm, I am going to answer your question. Um, before we started watching the Apple show, we watched Tan France on AD. He's building his new dream house in um, Salt Lake City. Tan France, if you don't know, is from Queer, Queer Eye. Eye. He's mm -hmm. from Next in Fashion. Mm -hmm. um, he's, a, he's a designer, but a personality. And he's doing a whole series with Architectural Digest where they're, him and his husband are building uh, a house in, in Salt Lake City. And it's not, it's not my cup of tea. It's not what I would do. He's doing, cho he's making design choices that I myself wouldn't make. But at the same time, I always love watching designers work. But what was hilarious last night was that we're watching somebody who has cost no object, you know, buying like a $200,000 stove. Oh man. Yeah. That stove was gorgeous. You know, having a custom window engineered and put in and again the win the window is amazing it's gorgeous it's it's going to be a very very pretty picture but then we went from that in our subscription feed to this girl who's probably in her late 20s mid to late 20s who has never renovated a house to the best of our knowledge and just the duality and this is what i love about youtube is that the programming can still be in the genre you like watching, which for me is like home renovation and, and woodworking. But you can literally go from someone that has it at this level to someone who's figuring it out. And you can actually learn from both simultaneously. And I loved that. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to admit, like, I don't, the tan videos have been very well produced, but I I don't feel like they're as informative or as is engaging as I think they should be. Whereas her video didn't really inform me too much. I mean, she's just literally shoveling out carpet. That's how abandoned and 
disgusting this house is. There's mold in it. Like and... she's, they lit her and I'm, I think maybe her boyfriend mm-hmm. or a husband, literally just grabbing snow shovels and shoveling the carpet off of the subfloor. Because they're so wet. Because it's so wet and degraded. And the previous owner had just put cardboard boxes over it flat cardboard over it and just sealed all that oh it was yeah it's 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 awful but it's fun it's fun but, to yeah watch. and the cool part about it is she like for real it's an abandoned house so everything that belonged to whoever was once the there. owner yeah was still there so all of this mid-century furniture, furniture a piano a baby she, or a, ha- she has a grand quai piano an original like the old naming structure. She doesn't know anything about pianos. And she's like, hey, if anyone knows anything about pianos, let me know in the comments. And she's taking a picture of the insides. And I'm like, it's a, oh, it's a vintage quai from like 1960. Oh. 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 And she's like, I, it's like Hawaii with a K. And I'm like, it's quai. <laughs> anyway. Um. Yeah, it's been fun. And like, was it Blacktail Woodworking, like his channel? I I don't particularly, like his furniture that he makes isn't for me. He makes everything like epoxy tables and whatnot. But he's so much fun to watch. It's and because you like him because he trolls his... He trolls his audience his, so yeah. hard. So he definitely gets... Uh, and I mean, if you have a YouTube channel, yeah. this just comes with the territory. There are people... Yeah that just like to poke, you know, like there was some jackass on here earlier that was like, have you had a facelift? And, you know, yeah. Someone asked if yeah. I had a facelift? Yes, yes. Not they that cre- there's anything wrong. They with- created the channel today just to be, you know, a jerk or whatever. Um, so anyway, comes with the territory. Yeah. But there's- this guy, he basically pokes at people like that yeah. <laughs> on as in all of his voiceovers because – it's kind of like a ASMR mm-hmm. channel where he's just like planing wood and stuff and <laughs> whatever. I don't really particularly like to watch it, but I do get a giggle out of it when he's, you know, um, pushing back at the real uh, woodworkers that oh I've apparently gone, tell him what time it is on I've the reg. I've gone his comments <laughs> too, and I'm just like, wow, it every every genre. Um. Yeah, no, someone commented like Yeah, they wanted they were like have you had botox and have did you have a face facelift? And it's like have you, can you not see the f- deep set wrinkles? <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> no. Ooh. They, I think they make you look distinguished. But <laughs> I just think dude knows zero about I, I, anything that I he's mean, trying to you know rile you up over well, I, you yeah. know honestly though what i take offense to about that kind of stuff though it's not that i mean people are always going to say whatever they're going to say it's just in saying that while you you may be trying to hurt me or whoever you direct it at like you're also vilifying something that has it's not bad it's not wrong you can do whatever you want whatever makes you happy like this whole notion, like getting a facelift or Botox or coloring your hair, or in my case, using hair growth products because I didn't want to go bald. Like Thanks to our sponsor, Keeps. Like <laughs> not intentional, but yeah. And it's like, there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And, you know, someone, someone also commented like, Andrew's picking at his beard. He looks nervous. No, my beard itches. <laughs> It's just, it's at this length and anyone that's ever grown a beard will understand when it's coming in, it's too scratchy. If you have a partner and you want to kiss him or her, like it gets too scratchy. Then it gets long enough where it doesn't bother them. And that's the butter zone. And then it comes out of the butter zone and it's not long enough that it's like (laughs) cool and in, in hipster rock star. It's just, but it's not short enough either. And it gets itchy and that's it. I just haven't shaved it down because the last time I shaved it down, (laughs) you would have thought that I grew a nipple in the center of my forehead. Like seriously, (laughs) that I had like a nubbin, a nubbin, like I had, or I had grown a horn 
because <laughs> I I am so sorry to I think it was KLH. I am so sorry <laughs> that I chose to shave on the day that I reviewed your product because while a lot of people enjoyed that review, it would appear 90% of the people only wanted to talk about my face. Yeah. And they completely glossed over the loudspeaker. And for that, I apologize. That was a first. That was something I didn't know could really happen. Like, wow. Like, my face was more important than the topic we were talking about. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I really... The one of the things I don't like about my job is is how is is how easy it is for people to forget that we're all just human beings, you know, you know, and like someone someone else over here, um, and I'm not I'm not calling you out, sir, to to like pick a fight or anything, but someone made a comment. To the, to the effect like watching Christy and I or watching our channel makes you think that you have to like win the lottery or anything like that. Um, I know what you're saying, but it's, it's also one of those things where it's like you, you don't see a lot of people, not you specifically, but just a lot of people, especially when you're a personality, whether it's YouTube or you're Tan France or, or whatever, like there's a lot of work that goes into it. And in our case, while we may be talking about how we want to turn our house into a resort and all of that, like we have literally spent every spare moment we've had for almost three years saving, planning, and getting things in an order so that we can do this one thing. And even though we have done all of this planning, all of this work, and frankly, saving, we're still at the mercy of certain vendors and certain things like, hey, can you, is there any chance we can just get this and not, you know, because we're not made of money, you know? And so I just, I, I, I don't like the vilification of like things that you think you can't have. So if you don't think you can have it, vilify it. You know, if someone doesn't look their age, they must have done something. I am, I mean, admittedly, I will say this, admittedly, I am going to greater lengths to take care of myself as I've gotten older, um, especially in the last two years. I have dramatically changed my lifestyle. Um, I exercise daily and not like, oh, I go for a walk. Like, no, like I'm on a routine and I don't have a trainer, but we have a machine that acts as a trainer. Um, and I do that every day. I, I use face products <laughs> like lotions because <laughs> that's not something that was ever taught to me in my teens and twenties and thirties. And yeah, yeah. Now that I'm 43, 43 years old, I, um, I don't want to look like a crocodile, uh, before I have to, you know, before I have to, I don't want skin cancer. I don't want, you know, that, um, Oh, yeah. And then people accuse or, you know, throw the term out vain. You're so vain. And it's like, what's wrong with that? It's it, for me, it's not. I mean, to be to be I don't want to interrupt you, but yeah. for me, it's not a vanity thing at all. It is a health thing. And what people some of you watching this who have followed me and have have known known me for more than say this year or the year before since the kind of growth of the YouTube channel, you know what I've been through. Like, you know, it's not vanity, you know, that it's health, you know, and I'm sorry, like the older I get, the more I realize that I, I, 
I've, I've had enough experiences where I, I feel like every day I wake up, I'm on borrowed time, you know? And so I just want to stick around as long as I can. And part of that is taking care of your body, taking care of the shell that you have, as well as what it protects and, you know, upstairs and here and all of that stuff. And so, yeah, it just, it, it bugs me. It bugs me when people try and take something that honestly, we should not be vilifying. We should not be vilifying wanting to save money to better your circumstances. And if someone manages to do that and betters their circumstances, we should not try and tear them down. We should go, is that what you set out to do? Did you accomplish it? Did it do the thing you hoped it would for you? Yes. Hi, mother F and five, because that's all that matters. Were you unhealthy? Did you get healthier? Yes. Hi, mother F and five. You know, that's all that matters. And I don't care what form it takes, you know? And I just, I don't know. I don't know. I just, there's this, this undercurrent of cynicism and anger, you know, and it, it's worse online, but it doesn't make any sense to me. It just yeah, doesn't, it, really make, doesn't. it doesn't make any sense to me. It seems, it, to me, it sounds like it comes, often it sounds like it comes from a place of jealousy and, and envy, mm -hmm. which makes, I mean, it's understandable, but it's like being upset that your friend has success. Like, what what good does that do? You know, like, can you not just look at someone else and be and be happy for them? You know, yeah. or if it's not something that is in, of interest to you, mm -hmm. like maybe maybe you're into. Obviously, you guys are watching. You're obviously into high fi and home theater. Mm -hmm. You know, just think about how maybe when other people have looked at the fact that maybe you spent a significant amount of money on a pair of speakers, mm -hmm. you know, and they look at you like you're crazy and how did that make you feel? You know, so don't turn around and do it to somebody else because maybe their passion, you know, their passion is who knows? Yeah. Um, buying a car that makes them happy. Yeah. And yeah, I, I know I got off on a little tangent and we have had a couple of uh, questions here and I do, I want to make sure that I, I answer everybody. Um, but yeah, I, I just clicked over to the, 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 the bigger chat and you know, people, he's so old. I was like, what? No, they were, I, they were just basically repeating what I said. And I was just kidding. I oh. think I love him and I think he's super <laughs> handsome. Um, permit me a 30 second side, one more 30 second sidebar. Um, If anything that I have said in the past 10 minutes has resonated with you, has struck a chord, or you agree with me, one of the ways that we can all kind of do a little bit to hopefully turn the tide and make not only hi-fi, but YouTube and just this general new world we live in more accepting is don't fall for or don't patronize people that want to see that want to see others fail or want to gain notoriety by tearing other people down because that's probably always going to happen but if we reward that if we turn out for that too, then we're just going to stay in this freaking loop. And I fear it's only going to get worse, not better. So anyway, uh, G Papa, your question has been on the screen <laughs> for like 15 minutes. Uh, since you love and also studied films, I wondered what your five most influential favorite filmmakers of all time five Hollywood, five international and why also any new upcoming filmmakers you like, uh, boy. Um, I like, um, boy, 
The most influential filmmakers to me are probably not the usual. I mean, some of them probably are the usual, but I, you know how everyone's like, oh, Coppola, Spielberg, and stuff like that. And they're, they're, they're great. I liked Kazan back in the 50s. I liked Kazan a lot. His films were always really great. Um, there was a, I don't, I, I loved genres of films. But, so like, I love film noir and, you know, obviously Hitchcock played in that vein, but I just loved the genre. And so that genre is very uh, influential for me, more so than maybe individual names. Um, uh, David Fincher has been a huge influence in in my just general creative career um he he had already somewhat been established in the commercial realm when i had entered into college and he did not go uh he did not go to school where i went to school but he um he ended up working for a studio or a commercial firm called propaganda and propaganda had um, inroads to where I went to school. And so it was through propaganda and art center at that time. This is, you know, late 90s, early 2000s. So like we were all in the sort of new blockbuster commercial era of, of filmmakers. And, you know, admittedly, when you're 19 years old and stuff, like I, I liked the older directors, but I really liked the new crop. And so I was very inspired and influenced by people like David Fincher. I spent time with Michael Bay and, you know, say what you want about him. I, you know, you can have whatever you can think, whatever you want about his, about his films, but I learned a lot from, from him. Um, but on the flip side, like getting to meet filmmakers in my job when I used to do movie posters and trailers and stuff like that and getting to meet some of the more independent uh, filmmakers, you know, like people behind Juno and, and stuff like that, like that was really, that was really rewarding as well. But I don't know, like if I have like five, you know, whatever, um, up and coming I don't know if she's up and coming anymore. I think she's she's been arrived for a while, but I I think uh, what's her face um, Barbie. Oh, Greta. Greta Gerwig Ger has Gerwig. been doing really really great stuff. Um, I don't even think Barbie's all that great, but I also think that you know the film. Did she do? She did no. She did Lady Bird. Lady Bird was fantastic. No, the other female director that did, well, she did the the uh, Darling movie, but the one before that. Um, Don't yeah. worry, darling. Don't worry, darling. But the one before that with the two teenage girls in high school. Oh, um, uh, Booksmart. Booksmart, yeah. That uh, I thought that was Olivia. What's her face? Olivia Wilde is the yeah. director. Like I think that Olivia Wilde is actually a really, really good director. Um. You divorce yourself from the personal whatever, but I, I think she's actually really, really good. Um, yeah, the, 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 the per the creative team behind the creator. I know they did Rogue One. Um, they're fantastic. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I just like good stories. Like I really. You know, like I can sit there and say like, hey, Christopher Nolan knows how to craft a good movie. Do I go out of my way to watch Christopher Nolan movies? No, I really don't. Um, because to me, like he can tell an epic story, but I don't think he's ever fully, like not since maybe Insomnia or Memento crafted a tight, gripping story from start to finish. Like that's the one thing that I think as directors get bigger and more notoriety and all of this stuff like they have a hard time editing and the longer their careers go on the longer their movies get 
and the least interest, the less interested I become in them because they all start their careers either in commercials or doing lower budget stuff where they have to be very economical and, and, and you'll watch old interviews and it's like, Hey, you got to tell it in a tight 90 and you got to do this. Then you fast forward 30 years in their career and they're the same directors saying that, you know, audiences should just suck it up and bring a bucket or something because you're going to keep them in their seats for four hours or five hours. And it's like, come on. So I digress. Uh, Glenn, can a Blu-ray player play SACD disc? It's really going to depend on the Blu-ray player. Some can, some don't. Um, the easiest way to tell, uh, either you know, Google it or whatnot, but if you're like in a secondhand store, um, you know, uh, just look at the NASCAR logos. If you see the if you see the 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 emblem on the top, you're good to go. What Steely Dan song would you listen to for testing speakers? None, none. Um, nothing against Steely Dan. <laughs> nothing against Steely Dan. But um, I uh, I once did some work for. Uh, Emotiva. This was years ago, so it's not a conflict of interest. This was like well over ten years ago, and uh, that was like the only record that. Uh, or no, no, it was Dire Straits. Sorry, it was. Oh man, it was Dire Straits. Uh, it was just on loop. So Steely Dan, I don't know. Dire Straits, nothing. <laughs> uh, Dan B. Since upgrading a Yamaha. Since upgrading a Yamaha WXC50 with a FIO R7, I've been struck, struck by the improvement. As a lifelong vinyl listener, I'm using my turntable very rarely. It seems like digital has eclipsed vinyl thoughts. I, I, I would argue digital eclipsed vinyl a long time ago. Um, does vinyl sound different than digital? Sure, absolutely it does. But is did is vinyl as good a quality as what digital can do if done correctly i mean objectively no uh that doesn't mean that personal taste doesn't come into it and all of this but i i listen to digital or streaming music 98 percent of the time despite having multiple record players and records i i think digital has eclipsed vinyl and did a long time ago I still like vinyl, but digital eclipsed it. Can we expect a Cinema 30 review one day? Um, I mean, I don't know. Maybe. I, I haven't requested it, but if I were to ask for it, I'm sure they would send it. Um, I. Oh, wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, man. Sorry. I was thinking of a different product. Cinema 30 receiver. Yes, you should expect it. I don't know if it's like soon, soon. Did yes. that just... It just came out. It was announced? It was It was announced and yeah, no, it's... It will happen. It will happen. We didn't We're get still a press... Wait, we no, we, 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 got we, noti we got notified. We did? Okay. Yes, we got notified. Marantz is very good. Um, we're still waiting on our Denon... A1H. A1 yeah. Um, that's one I want to do. I want to make sure that I have the A1H here and the Cinema 30 here at the same time. And we're still waiting on our A1H. So that's where that's where things are with that. I'm sorry. I was thinking of a different Marantz product. And so, yeah, no, you can expect a Cinema 30 one day. Yes. Oh, the Wicked Plumber just gifted memberships. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. J, I purchased the Cinema 50 to pair with my existing Sony SSCS floor speakers. Is it worth it to upgrade them to two SVS Prime Dual Floor Standards? I have a sub. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't really answer this question without like my own personal biases, I guess, getting involved. But I personally, me, in every test and experience that I've had. Like I don't personally uh, gravitate towards the SSCS line. It's not a speaker that I like for me. Um, do I think the upgrade being the SVS Prime Dual better? I would say the SVS are probably going to be a better speaker. Um, would I go from the Sony to the SVS Prime Dual? 
I don't know that I would, but that's just me. That's just me. I'm, I've had experiences with both of those speakers and I can appreciate them on different levels. Um, it's just not a sound that I particularly go for. Um, but I do think if you have a cinema 50, your Sony's are not, I mean, it's driving your Sony's just fine. You're hearing everything that that speaker can do. Um, but your cinema 50 can do more than what I believe the Sony's will give you. So anything that might be a little step up from that will likely pay dividends, uh, in the enjoyment factor. I would check out the Kindle 2F. Yeah, a great speaker. From yeah. KLH. KLH Kindle 2F, made in Canada. Uh, share some basic design philosophies and designing a listening and viewing space. I saw that you're undergoing some new changes in yours. Wishbone, I, I plan to. Can we, can I not, can I, can I do that in a video? Because it's already in progress. I don't want to give too much away. Yes, if you follow me on Instagram, uh, you may have noticed one or two stories in the past couple of days. Uh, where I have taken a sledgehammer to our room. Um, there's a video in the works that will kind of go into room design and that the current room design isn't even a final room design. It's like an intermediate room design because we're still trying to figure out what the hell we want to do. So, but, but um, I think it's going to be a couple weeks, two, three weeks before that video comes out anyway. But um, if you're looking for rental-friendly solutions, what we've now done, very rental-friendly and wicked affordable. Wicked affordable because we did it all DIY. Um, nothing against uh, room acoustics and you know companies like that and whatnot, but that, that stuff adds up. And knowing that we needed to get rid of stuff, but we also still needed to function, but we also know that this may not be the final final. We were trying to find a solution that worked, that was going to uh, do what we needed to do, look really good. And I think we found it. And I'm really excited to share that with you because um, I know some of you will probably dig this a lot. Um, inevitably, some people will be like, I like the old room better. I get it. We're going to go over why the old room worked, but ultimately didn't work. So stay tuned for that. Um, okay, uh, Lisa, I think Lisa, your question is gonna close us out. Thank you for these fun monthly live streams. I, I can't thank you guys enough for participating in them with us. I, I, I love doing them, I really do. Um, <laughs> Wishbone, I know you're over the wood slat look so I expected it to go. Oh, it's gone, it's gone. Um, you won't, you won't see it. You won't notice that it's gone for several weeks, but, uh, it's gone. Um, anything, anything like, like little last minute stuff here, uh, that I'm just catching now that I've changed my filter. Um, ta -ta 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 -ta. I'm loving the gifted memberships. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much. Um, no, you guys are doing great. You guys are... Um, yeah, there's a question. Why do reviewers think the Anthem AVM90 sounds better than, Marant than the Marantz AV10? And not that I think you need to answer that question or the, about those products specifically, mm -hmm. but I think it would be nice to, to address, like, why do reviewers come away with different experiences I mean, it's kind of obvious to me. It's just the same way that you, um, I'm not sure what your username is mm -hmm. supposed to be, but the one that's on the screen, mm -hmm. like, why do you prefer something over something else? You know, your room could be a factor, your listening preferences, your gear that you're using to power mm -hmm. your I mean, yeah, any, you know, or, any number of things um, can also just be like what, as a reviewer, you have access to. Um, why, why do reviewers think the Anthem sounds better? I mean, yeah, that I don't I know. I care about Andrew's inputs here. I care about Andrew's. Cool. 
I care about that. Yeah. That's that's kind of rude. That's kind of rude, dude. Um, I was actually going to say that along the lines of what Christy said, I think some of the f reasons behind it are really summed up nicely. Dennis Berger wrote an article recently. Dennis, full disclosure, uh, Dennis and I used to work together uh, on another publication years and years and years ago. Um, but Dennis wrote an article, and I don't know who he's working for at this point, um, but he was, it's basically the needs of a reviewer versus the needs of an individual. And he talks about how if he wasn't a reviewer, his choices would be likely radically different. For example, he personally would probably buy Kef LS60s. But as a reviewer, that would limit his ability to do 90% of his job, despite those being like his favorite speakers right now. And so I think it might come down to just like that simple. Like the Anthem may enable some reviewers to do more aspects of their job. It may also be more advent. It may just be more readily available to them, depending on where they are compared to Morant's. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I just, I think, I don't think the Anthem rides a hype wave. I'll say that much. I, 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 I do think that when people tend to gravitate towards an Anthem product, it's probably somewhat justifiable and a little less hype related just because Anthem's still a little bit more boutique-y than mass market. And in my experience, I find Anthem products to sound exceptional. Oh, I agree. I, I, they I don't think always, they sound great. They don't always have the greatest... I mean, I have a very limited experience with them, but I have liked what we've. I mean, had. I've, I've 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 listened to Anthem products before they were Anthem when they were back in when you know they were Sonic Frontiers and then they became Anthem and and stuff and so they they make a good product. I had a D two V processor for whew, eight years. They make good stuff, man. They do. Um, I don't think it's like a conspiracy or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. Would I pick the Anthem receiver over uh, a Moran's AB10? Well, the AB10 was exceptional. That was a processor. The AB10 was awesome. Um, I don't know. I, I probably would side with the Morantz at this point just because Morantz has the user interface down. I mean, the AB10 was flawless in my opinion. Um, but yeah... I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure someone hooked an Anthem up to an Audio Precision one time and found some ridiculously low number with some ridiculously weird input voltage and they were just like, see, it's better. And it's like, whatever. Uh, pick it out in a double blind. Here's 50 bucks. I bet you can't. And, you know, which one, which one matters, you know? Um... Let's see. Oh, someone, I was, I was trying to sign off here, but then we got concept 50 sales said my reasonably old AB NAD C372 was the weak link in my system. What amp would you pick to go with the fifties? NAD C3, C372 was the weak link in my system. Hmm? Why? Why would that be a problem? I know that amplifier. I mean, is it the most whatever? N no, but it's not bad. Look, man. Didn't my you question, just say you were really happy with them? My question is, is, is yeah. If you're, if you, if you're happy with the Concept Fifties, you got them home and you like them. Screw what the salesperson says. You're happy. It's paid for. Live with it. It sounds like you just got your Concept Fifties. Live with it for at least a year. Then worry about whether or not you want to get on the hamster wheel. If it's all working, you're going to do more. Let's put it this way. You're going to do more with your SHD 
and making it just the way you want it than any amplifier I could recommend to put in front of that because that NAD will power those concept 50s just fine. Just and, fine. And maybe experiment with the placement of your speakers placement, as well. EQ, room EQ. Like, yeah, you, you're good. You're good. Uh, Harry Giles, enjoying this chat today. Love the musings on broader topics than just audio. Those, oh, wait, those are great as are, well. Are great as well. Okay, sorry, I just running together. Thanks, guys. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank uh, Harry, you. I really do. I, um, it's nice to be able to go off topic a little every once in a while. It is, you know, because I think it allows us to get to know you and you'll uh, um, get to know us a little better mm -hmm. when it's not just you know, speaker A, B, or C. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And it's a lot, I, it's a lot more fun for us too. And that's one of the reasons why I really look forward to the live stream Thursdays is because it's like, I, I do love answering all of your questions and I will, I, you know me, I will just, I will answer your questions as long as I can. But I do like that sometimes something gets kind of off topic and then we, go here and then we go here and then we always try and find a way to make it to, you know, come back and make it all make sense. Um, but yeah, I, I would say we're, we're definitely going to be expanding into more of the other topics um, this year. I was kind of hoping to have already kind of done it by now. Um, but you know, like all things, sometimes stuff stalls and you got to be patient and all of that. Um, but yeah, I, I hope everyone that says they're, they're enjoying the, the deviation. I just remember that when we deviate a little bit, um, because yeah, I, I think, I think just reviewing, reviewing, reviewing after a while, I mean, it gets tedious for me. I'm, I'm my, like I said, my 24th year of review after review after review but i also think it, it it just beats everybody down like you the audience like i think there's review fatigue to be honest i really do um and so i i i want to have fun and i want it to be about fun and i want to make it about ways that we can also keep up to date with the newest stuff because let's face it new is fun and cool and interesting but at the same time, like a lot of you have really, really, and I do mean this, really good systems. You do. You're worried that you don't, but you do. You have great gear. You have gear right now that you are freaking out about and whether or not you've done the right thing that I still didn't have 10 years into my, 10 years into working in this business. Like you have access to stuff that I wish I had access to, you know, 20 years ago. You are all sitting on gold mines. I want part of this channel to be about how do we make sure that you're getting the most out of it? And how do we make sure that maybe just maybe we make it a little less intimidating and more hospitable so that those of you with family members, Lisa, I saw your comment, like you're, you're, you said your family's crazy because you're making changes. How do we make that craziness go away? And how do we make this more approachable? How do we make this more fun? Because it's actually the most fun part about this isn't the gear. In my opinion, it's not the gear. When you get the gear dialed in, the worst part, in my opinion, and in my weekly life, is knowing I have to change something. I hate that. Right now, like Sonos Faber Lumina 2s, you want free advice system matching? And I know some of you are going to be like, that's really expensive. Sonos Faber Lumina 2s, Rotel 5000, get yourself some Google Homes. Done. Pick a TV. Pick a TV. You're good. You're done. You, you, you have a system. You have a system and it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. You're done. And anyone, anyone, any channel, any magazine, any salesperson that's like, well, actually, you know what you need. I need nothing. I need you to shut up. I have something <laughs> awesome. Leave me alone. Then you come here. You come here. Camera, camera one. 
because it's just the one. <laughs> and you and it's like, let's make it pretty. Let's make it beautiful. Let's make it not scary for everyone else in your house that doesn't share the same level of passion. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to tear my room apart. And another reason why we're going to take some of this outside. And another reason why we're going to take some of this into the kitchen. And we're going to take it all over the place. Because I actually don't sit right there and just listen all that often. I'm doing stuff. So let's let's do stuff. Let's do stuff. I mean, you do sit there a lot when you're evaluating. I mean, yes, when I'm when I'm evaluating. Just to be clear. <laughs> yeah, and I got my several I have like three different sound meters and I'm just like this and I'm checking this and I'm checking that, but like if someone's like, "Hey Andrew, I just want to come and hang out with you and just what's your day like what's a day off like?" I'd be like, "Well, it's not a full day, but if you want to come experience my 4 hours off, um I I have a lot more fun thinking about ways to improve everyday things, you know? Like one of the videos that I'm working on is like the 10, like 10 of my biggest hacks for a system. And I guarantee you, they're not what you're thinking. And one of them, one of them just got here. I'm going to get buried with that thing. Uh, we this is this is a tool we got for our lives and life hack unlocked. Um, but yeah, I, I we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna have some some fun. I think you have two more uh, super chats. Uh, do I? Okay. Um, let me make sure. Two more super chats. Uh, Harry, yes, Steph, uh, Stephen, Stefan, thank you so much. Uh, which sounds better to you, Arc, Genesis, or Dirac? I would like to get both of your opinions. Uh, very simple. For me, I think Arc Genesis does sound better than Dirac. To me, Arc is the closest to how I tend to manually tune my systems than any of the other automated things. So it just... It really jives with me because it does seem like I made the adjustments the way I normally would manually. So I think Arc, Anthem Arc Genesis does sound better after the fact than Dirac, but I love Dirac too. So what do yeah. you... Uh, I mean, I think it really comes down to the receiver more so than anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought the, the Anthem sounded really good. Oh, brilliant. But then... It was kind of slow, and so some of the other but aspects like the, yeah. of the user interface was a little tedious, mm -hmm. whereas I think like a Marantz, they're just using more up-to-date menus and things like that. So I think it makes it a little more user-friendly to get a good sound. But we're back to like the emotiva question. We're just focusing on the sound of the room correction. I think you can have good sound with both. I mean, oh. I like Sony's whatever the heck they're doing. Yeah, and that's just... Fancy graphical interface. Yeah. Yeah. So true. True that. True. Go go with whatever your you know, whatever works for you. Um, you someone hold on. Mm -hmm. Oh goodness. Uh, someone Stephen Brockway mm -hmm. did like a two dollar uh, super chat, but there was no question. Oh. And I th the I think maybe their question is: Have you ever thought about going to Deckwear's Deck Fest? <laughs> yeah, actually, I um, almost went to the second. The, so I was a Deckwork customer and very early on, like in the er, mid-90s. And they did DeckFest mid-late 90s. And I'd read about it on their forum and everything. And I was, admittedly, I, I was my first attempt in college, I think, or just wrapping up high school. But I, I wanted to go, um, and there was DeckFest 2 or 3, uh, the second or third year that they did it. I almost went. I almost went. Um, but I haven't, honestly, haven't thought about it uh, since that. But no, I, I wanted to go. 
Uh, Bob Simmons, Sony STR AZ 5000 ES with Polk R700 pair well or Morant Cinema 50. Um, well, unfortunately, I don't have a 5000 ES to R700, so I can't tell you, but I have put a Cinema 50 with R700s, and that pairing was phenomenal. The 7000 ES is phenomenal also with the R700s. We have taken delivery of a 5000 ES but I have no personal experience with, like it's still in the box. Like it's here, it will probably get unboxed in the next week and begin the evaluation process. But I just, full disclosure, I can't answer that question probably in the way you want me to. So I'm gonna have to say, I know the 7000 ES Polk R700s is good, but I also know the Cinema 50 is phenomenal with those speakers. Jose writes, this year I'm planning on upgrading my Atmos speakers. Don't know if Klipsch 502 eyes or SVS Prime Elevation System Onkyo RZ50 LCR with subwoofer from Klipsch. Um, I mean, if you already have Klipsch speakers, you can upgrade the Atmos and keep it all in the family. Tonally, you're probably that's probably going to be your best bet in making sure that there's the greatest opportunity uh, for the sound, tone, timbre of the speakers themselves to be matchy-matchy. Um, the one thing you want to avoid, if you can, some people probably aren't, some people don't always notice, but some people do. One of the things you want to avoid is like, let's say you've got, for example, really bright speakers up front, and then you go to something that's a little bit more neutral in the surrounds, and you end up maybe having to turn the surrounds up because they don't seem as apparent as what you have in the front, and that's the imbalance that maybe you are running up against. Assuming everything is set up correctly. Um, so if you're used to a certain tone, a certain sound, um, I would probably try and keep it all in the in the family so that you're not going like, oh, what's going on? Why is this not, why am I not having the feeling I'm supposed to be having? Although SVS sonically is not too dissimilar from, from Klipsch. So. Okay, you just got one more from um, Tweak and Addy. So we're gonna answer this, no, that, and then oh, oh yeah, and then we gotta okay. we gotta get out of here, guys. <laughs> it's been two hours. It's two and a half hours. Um, I have a Sony AN1000 and Klipsch RP600 bookshelves, plus a Panamax PM5400. There is a hiss, even when the Sony is at zero. Thoughts on getting rid of this? Here's what I would do. I would um, either plug your Sony directly into your wall outlet, remove the Panamax from your signal chain, plug the Sony directly into a wall outlet, see if the hiss is still there. If the hiss is still there, take your Sony and just one of your clip speakers and go to your kitchen. Go to your kitchen. Don't worry about sound quality or anything like that. We're just listening for the hiss. Plug it into one of your kitchen outlets, plug the speaker in, leave it at zero, do you hear a hiss? If you don't hear a hiss, then what is causing that is in whatever line or circuit is servicing your current entertainment area. Some filtration, power conditioners, whatever, may, may get rid of that, not all. If you take the Panamax out and just plug the Sony directly in the wall, out, the wall outlet and you don't hear a hiss, then something about the Panamax is causing it. So you just kind of have to troubleshoot. Now, if it's in the, if it's in the circuit that f is in, say, your living room, then the only way you may be able to fix it is to have it addressed at the panel if that's possible. Um, I don't know if you rent, if, you, if it's a house, if it's an apartment. If it's an apartment, you may just have dirty power like all up and down the building, in which case a Panamax maybe isn't the right power conditioner, and then you have to just do some more research um, on something that's going to isolate and clean up that noise if it can be cleaned up. But first, identify what might be the cause. And if you continue to just plug the Sony into everything, and it's you still hear the hiss, then there may be something up with the Sony. 
but welcome to troubleshooting <laughs> the part of my job i absolutely hate um so yeah okay i think that is everybody i uh i really appreciate it i really really do um thank you thank you thank you so much for tuning in and sticking with us for two and a half hours i uh, hope it was fun i i'm i apologize if i was a little slow <laughs> not as engaging not as fine, babe. funny uh, but uh yeah i i thank you so so much um so yeah that wraps up another fun third thursday of the month live stream um I hope you'll join us next month where I'm sure we'll have way more to talk about. I might even have some photos and video updates of what's going on out there uh, maybe to show you. I don't know. They say in a month's time we should have some stuff <laughs> up, built. I um, think it's going to be a lot of dirt. There's going to be a lot of dirt for a while. There's already a lot of dirt, honey. Yeah. Nothing like clearing a lot, thinking you're going to start three months ago and uh, just staring at dirt. Anyway, I digress. It's just because I love hanging out with you guys. I do. I'm stalling. <laughs> I'm stalling. It's five o'clock. It's happy hour. I'm going to have, you know what I'm going to do? And you're welcome to join me in spirit. <laughs> we're gonna, adorable. We're going to log off here. I'm going to go into the kitchen. I'm going to make some salt uh, water crackers. A little bit of brie and honeycomb and and, and cabrese or cabrese whatever. salami. Yeah, mm, yeah. We're gonna make a little couple of little finger sandwiches. I'm gonna pour myself this cheap ass bottle of red, uh, uh, what's it called? Tall Dark Stranger, which I found at Target. It was nine bucks, and it's great. It's absolutely great. Coming to YouTube, Andrew's wine review you, oh, channel. You don't, you don't want that. <laughs> Half uh, the time he's he hands me the glass to sniff it, and he's like, "Is this still good?" <laughs> yeah. Uh, I yeah. Anyway, Tall Dark uh, Stranger was the wine. It's from Argentina. It's a Malbec. It's a Malbec, and it is nine dollars at Target. I bought it purely on the label. I like good design, and it turns out that it's it tastes good. It tastes good. So we're going to make... You're going to pour me a small shot of white wine. Yes. Of um, Criterion uh, Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. Because the Criterion label, Vineyard, not anything to do with Criterion movies. Are you sure? To the best of my knowledge, I'm pretty sure about that. It would be cool if it was. It would be cool. Someone DM me in Instagram and let me know if I just made a boo-boo. Um, but yeah, if you're, if you're into wines, but you don't want to go broke criterion, their entire label is pretty rock solid. I mean, they do have some expensive stuff, but their 14 to $24 bottles of just about everything are every bit as good as their 40 and $50 bottles of the same stuff. Um, in my opinion. So, uh, check them out. Uh, yeah. So there you go. We're going to make some brie and have a little red wine and enjoy the rest of our evening. And I hope and want the same for you. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. As always, the only person who has to like the sound of your system or your purchasing decisions or your television or your room or anything you want to do with your hair, your, your face. face, your clothing, <laughs> just your life is you. Maybe your partner, but that's about it. Everyone else, you have my permission to just like. <laughs> you bet. You bet. <laughs> you bet. Or as uh, what's her face said, I don't know who what's her face is, but there was a young girl <laughs> who had the perfect, the perfect retort to everyone that hates. Die mad. God, who was that? I don't know, but <laughs> a bunch of people came for her and she was just living her best life and she's like, die mad. <laughs> so we don't want anyone to die. But God. but it was it was someone's gonna Yeah. Oh yeah, this. no, I that's 
can't wait for the the remixes on that. Oh boy. Anyway, guys, I, I, it's been fun. And oh boy. I do I do love this, and thank you for thank you for making this job and this life that Christy and I get to have uh, with you all uh, possible. Yeah, we do appreciate it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't wait to swim. I can't wait to just show you what we have been working on tirelessly for years. Really, like, I can't tell you how hard it's been not to share, like, the renderings that we've, the various renderings that we've created. And I've, like, all these plans where it's, like, like this one over here and yours truly, like, we taught ourselves, like, drafting software because we couldn't find anyone that would do it the way we wanted to do it. Oh, I designed a we designed a whole house. I know. And so it's going to be really fun, even on the, the room side where it's like, here's the various versions of the room that we created in 3D modeling, and then here's how it actually coincides. So anyway, anyway, again, all coming. Thank you so much. Love you all. And we will see you on Sunday for a brand new video. Bye. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thank you.